Hi everyone. Um, so after reading The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison, it's pretty clear to understand and see why she would include that these uh, Dick and Jane stories in her prologue three different times, three separate ways, three separate styles. Um, and so during this time period, um, these Dick and Jane stories from the 1930s to I think the 1990s were used in a school setting to teach kids um, how to read, uh, how to write short sentences. So. Um, you can see in the first paragraph of the Dick and Jane story how it's very clear, structured sentences, subject, verb, punctuation marks, spaces, all of that kind of stuff. And I did even ask my parents during this week, um, who grew up during the 1960s, 1970s, if they had ever encountered these stories in a school setting. And they said, yeah, during first and second grade, their uh, teachers would use these stories um, to help them learn how to read. And then looking at it, um, from like a deeper uh, standard and point of view, um, it's kind of easy to see how this could reflect the ideal family back in that time period. You know, you have a mom, you have a dad, you have Dick, you have Jane, you have a dog, um, you have this cute little house, um, kind of reflects the ideal white uh, standard of living in the suburbs. And also I think it's interesting though in this Dick and Jane story how no one will play with Jane. You know, the cat runs away, The mom laughs at her, I think the dad smiles at her, and then the dog um, barks at her, and finally the friend comes along and says, play Jane, play. Um, so I think Jane in this scenario reflects and kind of parallels Piccola because no one, Piccola kind of feels left out and, you know, with her mom and dad constantly fighting, she's not able to really find who she is and like connect with people around her. Um, so she has difficulty growing up in that kind of style of life. Uh, I also think the purpose that Toni Morrison included the three different types of styles of the Dick and Jane stories was to reflect and parallel the three different types of families that we see in the bluest eye. So you have the white people, the white families, and they're reflected by the first style. Um, very clean cut punctuation marks, spaces, you know, what you would see in a uh, school setting up to the highest standards. Then um, you have the Mactier family, which is represented by the second paragraph. You know, the punctuation isn't as great, um, but you can still understand it, and I think that represents the Mactier family because um, they, although living in poverty, they do have their lives together and they're living around white people. Um, but they're able to see what the reality is and live um, a standard um, healthy lifestyle. However, then you have the Bre uh, Breedlove family and that is represented by the third uh, style of writing the Dick and Jane story. You know, it's all over the place, craziness, um, can't really read anything because the Breedlove family is crazy in a sense because the mom and dad are always fighting, you know. Um, Piccola gets raped by her dad, it's just not a very good environment to be in. and. She, um, Piccola is just surrounded by the poverty and um, reality of her life. Um, so I think then the story of the bluest eye talks about just how the black people more oftentimes black women are influenced by white's perspective and white reality, um, especially during this time period. Um, Picole wants these blue eyes that she sees all these uh, white kids around her have and she believes, she truly believes that these blue eyes would allow her to become prettier, more beautiful, more gorgeous and everything like that, but also be um, change her reality into a more beautiful reality. She thinks that the blue eyes that she would have would inspire beauty around her and change her parents um, from fighting to be loving and change her reality. And um, I think that's very like disheartening and sad to see this just because of how much she's suffering and how she thinks, oh, if I have these blue eyes that these white girls have around me, you know, my life will change for the better and I'll be able to change my reality because look at these girls who have the blue eyes, look at what, how they're living and then look how I'm living and I don't have these blue eyes. Um, so then connecting all this together, the prologue of Dick and Jane stories and the bluest eye to issues of uh, racial beauty, it is paramount um, that we see how people of color and people of minority, um, different races, back in the mid to late 1900s, um, held the idea that they were inferior and that their beauty was inferior to those of the white people and like white standards of beauty. Um, especially if you look at in the 1968 um, document of you know, No More Miss America, I think the second point that they make in there is how there's never, they had never had, since 1921, they had never had uh, African American female finalist or a Puerto Rican, Alaskan, Hawaiian, Native American, um, or Mexican American 
um, finalists and or winner in that case and so I think because they didn't have any winners back then from the Miss America it was like oh all this other racial beauty you know that's that's just down um, that's not up to the white standard of beauty we only have the white girl like white females winning Miss America competitions so that's why they wanted to say no more Miss America so I think it's important to realize that all uh, races and all skin colors are beautiful not just one